Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. I got a fun video for you today. Now, if you've been a subscriber for any amount of time or if you've seen any of the various videos on my channel, you know I'm a big fan of homemade musical instruments. I've made several um, varying from electronic instruments to string instruments and some percussion instruments and all kinds of stuff. So today I thought it might be kind of fun to just go take a look back and pick out my 10 favorite homemade musical instruments and share them with all of you guys. Now a couple quick logistics before we begin. So what constitutes a homemade musical instrument? I know there's a lot of people that have very definite feelings on this. Some people say if you buy a kit and you just assemble all the parts in the kit, then that is not a homemade instrument because you just put it together yourself, you didn't find any of the materials. But then if you follow that line of thought, that could go to, okay, I made a cigar box guitar, but I put pre-made guitar strings on it that I went and bought from Guitar Center, is that still a homemade instrument? And, you know, I mean, you could follow that rabbit hole as deep as you want to go, but for the sake of today, I am going to consider a homemade instrument to be anything that I built, whether it came from a kit or not. So there may be some stuff that came from kits, some that are completely from found materials, and some that are a combination, but that's what I'm going to do today. Also, what constitutes an instrument? Because some say it's not an instrument unless you can play recognizable pitches on it. Others say anything that makes sound is an instrument. And then you get into things where I can take a cup and hit the bottom of it and make sound. Does that make it an instrument? So uh, obviously there's a lot of thought about this, but for the sake of today, I'm going to consider them sound sources. So things that make sound on their own, you know, are designed to make sound. That's what I'm going to constitute. So just get those logistics out of the way. Let's go. And they're going to be in no particular order, just 10 items that uh, I want to share with you guys. So first up is the Jarmageddon. And let me kind of hold this close here. This is actually the first homemade instrument or project, whatever you want to call it, that I ever made. And it's really kind of a neat little, little thing. It's a kit and you buy the kit and all the parts are right here inside. You build it yourself. You have to wire up the circuit and all the components. Um, it's actually got a PCB in there. There you go. You can just see it. And it's made to fit inside of a ball jar. And so this actually becomes the lid and then you put any sort of uh, standard ball jar ring on there and voila. And all this thing does is generate glitch sounds. But I've found that I use this thing a lot. I've used it in a lot of my videos, particularly the electronic music, because um, it just makes cool sounds. And so it's got a special place in my heart. Number one, because it was the first one. And number two, because it just sounds cool. Okay, and next up is my four string fretless cigar box guitar. And uh, I made this uh, quite some time ago and I've used it in quite a few videos. I think one of the reasons I like it is because it just kind of came together. It wasn't really intentional. Um, I got this cigar box and I thought, wow, that's a perfect size cigar box to make a guitar out of. So I had the box and I just used things that I had on hand. I had this pickup on hand. Um, this knob came off of a, it was a knob that I placed on a different guitar. This was just a piece of poplar that I had on hand. I had some black tuners because I had just built a two string um, instrument that I wanted black tuners for and I couldn't find black tuners and singles so I bought a pack of six so I had the other four handy and it just kind of ended up looking really cool and uh, you know the pickups black the tuners are black that was just a happy accident but so I put this one together and not only that it sounds really cool and the third one is my uh, DIY liar that I got here now this again was a kit this was a K-Mice kit and you build it yourself. But what was interesting about this one is when I got the kit, and I go over this and there's a build video for it, but um, the back was like, really had some problems with like, it wasn't glued very well. So I ended up actually peeling the back off, separating it so that I could re-glue it. I um, mean, I actually had to smooth out some of the center piece because that was really the problem is it wasn't very um, uniform there. And so therefore the back wasn't glued very well. But in doing that, since I had it apart, I went ahead and created a cavity for a knob and a jack so I could make it electric. And I've used this thing quite a bit, actually. It has a very cool sound uh, when you hear it through effects and stuff. So this is a fun little instrument and it was super simple to build um, aside from me having to modify all of that, but it ends up being a happy accident. So this is my uh, lyre, pentatonic lyre. 
Okay, next up, we have the Diddly Spoon. And I did a video on this, and I actually have done a couple little clips with this thing as well. It's super fun. It's super tiny. This was a wooden spoon that was discarded um, that I rescued. And you can see I just kind of notched a spot for a tuner, put a screw in there to act as a nut, and then a bolt there to act as a bridge, and a picture hanger on the back to act as a tailpiece. And voila, you have a string instrument. Now, of course, having such a short scale, it's very high pitched, but if you plug this thing, it actually has a jack, and if you plug it in to like a distortion effect and really gear on it. Man, it sounds cool. It really does have a cool sound. And it's just kind of fun because it was such a like rescue, you know, this thing was thrown out and I turned it into something. So. So number five is my electric washboard. And this again, you know, it seems like all, a lot of my, my instruments have stories behind them, but this particular one, I got this at the Pennsylvania uh, Cigar Box Guitar Fest. And it was really in pretty bad condition. You can still see that the, the metal part here has got quite a bit of rust on it. And this was really beat up and kind of stained in some areas. So I just went with it and I whitewashed it, but I did a really crappy job if you can just kind of see that on purpose so that it would look really worn and distressed and then I decided to make it electric because why not so um, there's a back cover here that actually covers the um, electronics but there's a pickup in there and a volume and tone knob which you can see on the front along with the jack and it's an electric washboard and how many people have an electric washboard and washboards are always so fun I've used this in several videos when you just kind of want to do something that's kind of got that jug band feel or whatever <laughs> sometimes kind of nice to have a little washboard laying around they are really fun so again one of my favorites all right and that brings us to my DIY drone box so this is a really interesting instrument I made this quite some time ago and it actually has a couple of circuit boards in there that I bought um, and one of them basically has video game oscillators and one of them has a, uh, what is it, PT2399, which is essentially a delay chip. And I just kind of wired it together and put some switches and whatnot in there to change some of the parameters. And it just is so fun. Every time I play with this, I have so much fun. And um, so, you know, these switches will switch certain functions on and off. And then we've got some buttons to do some, um, you know, kind of circuit bendy type effects. It's got a quarter inch jack out and it uh, uses a standard um, boss style uh, pedal power supply. But again, it was just kind of a crazy thing that I built, but I just love it. It's so much fun. Okay, next up is the only wind instrument uh, on the list today. And this is my PVC didgeridoo I made. I actually made this fairly recently, so you might've seen that video. Um, but uh, it's just a piece of PVC that I, you know, heated up in the garage and then I had more fun finishing it than anything else, but I put a couple of bends in it just to kind of make it look like a branch, use some beeswax there for the mouthpiece and... It just really came out cool and it's just really fun to play and this thing, I think the grand total on this, if you don't count my time, I think I've got like six or seven dollars in this thing. I mean, very inexpensive instrument and just a heck of a lot of fun. Okay, next up is my two x four lap steel or specifically my blue two x four lap steel. I've made three of these and uh, this one, the blue one I think is my favorite, which actually happens to be the first one that I made, but I really do like this one. And maybe it's because it's the first one that I like it so much, but it's literally a two x four guys. It's literally a two x four with six strings on it. And it just, not only is it fun and does it look cool, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> Just a really neat thing, a little two by four lap steel. And again, these things cost you almost nothing to build. Um, again, I had most of the parts on hand, but you know, you've got some tuners, you've got a pickup, you've got, um, this is just a piece of wood I'm using as a bridge. But, and then other than that, you know, I granted I made it fancy with some of this stuff, but other than that, it's a dang two by four. You've probably got one in your garage right now. So anyway, just a fun little way to repurpose something and make something musical out of it. Okay, next up, we've got another instrument that comes from a kit. This is my DIY hurdy-gurdy, and my wife got me this for a birthday present. I think it was last year. I don't remember for sure. I think it was last year. But um, it's very simple. It's just got two strings inside of there. I'm not sure when you can see that, but there's two strings in there, and then as you push these, they uh, fret the one string, and the other one just always drones the same note. 
And so uh, it's just kind of a fun little thing. And honestly, this was super fun to build. You punch out all these little parts. They come on like flat sheets and you punch them all out and put it together. And then all the places where there's moving parts, you put wax there so they can actually move without binding. And it's just, it's a fun little kit. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't sound that great. I mean, it doesn't sound terrible, but it doesn't sound that great. <laughs> but still it's a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, this is a DIY hurdy-gurdy and the company that makes this is called U-Gears. And finally, one of my favorite DIY instruments I've ever made, this is the pizza paddle bass and it is literally a pizza paddle. I don't know if you can see that, but it's literally the kind of pizza paddle that they use at restaurants to um, get the pizza out of the oven. I mean, that's what it is. And I just saw it and saw the shape of it and I was like, you know what, that'd make a good bass. So, I put this together and of course you can see I reinforced some of the the body and the neck there because I was worried about the tension of the bass strings and I put a piece of wood here to use as a fingerboard. It is fretless and um, you know so I just kind of came up with this but what's amazing about this is it sounds so good. I actually did a video where I compared this to a couple of you know um, name brand store bought basses and it sounds really really good. And um, I don't remember how much I paid for this this pizza paddle, but I want to say it was, you know, less than twenty dollars. And then the rest of the parts I believe I have on, had on hand. And so again, a relatively easy way to just make a bass to add bass to some of your tracks or what have you. Okay, so there you have it. That was a list of ten of my favorite homemade instruments that I've come up with over the past few years. Either they be from kits or from found materials, whatever. But there you go. If you like this sort of content, leave me a comment and let me know. I can always do more of these kinds of videos. I've got plenty of instruments to go through. Uh, but anyway, yes, yeah, so if you like that, please let me know. If you want to see more, please let me know. And if you like what I do on this channel at all, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button below because uh, I deliver lots of this kind of content and I will see you guys in the next video.